Get ready for the 10th annual Tampa Bay Bench Fest! All right, are y'all ready to have a good time today? I said, are you all ready to have a good time today? Well, let's do it. We're going to be your MCs for the day, okay? Uh, my name is Mr. Royce Ayers Ashcroft. But you all can just call me Royce. Can everybody say hello, Royce? Hello, Royce. And my name is Imari Spigner, and in eight days it'll be Imari Spigner Ashcroft. <laughs> can everyone say hey, Imari? Hey, Imari. Greetings, everyone. Well, we are going to tell you all a little bit about our story, but. For everybody who's walking by, please feel free to come in, fill in the seats, come and have a seat, because we've got a really fun story to tell. Don't we? All right, yeah, yeah. We're going to tell you a little bit about what we do and how we came to terms of being vegan, okay? I guess I should start off with the latter first. Um, actually, how many of you all are vegan already? Can you put your hands up and make some noise? Awesome. So if, about half of you. How many of you have been vegan for at least one year? Uh, two years? Three years? Four? Five years? Five years vegan, still six? Seven? Eight? Nine? Ten? Eleven? Twelve years vegan? Thirteen? Fourteen? Fifteen? Okay, fourteen. Fourteen years vegan. Oh, we got fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, I'm about to run out of numbers. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 27 years? Oh, we still have a hand. Where at? 27, 28, 29, 30. 40 years vegan. Oh, my goodness. Big round of applause. See, you're the real MVP. People, whenever I tell people who aren't vegan yet, that I've been vegan for almost four years, they're like, wow, I don't know how you do it. But I'm saying, I don't know how you do it by all the information that we have out here now and that you haven't gotten on this fantastic lifestyle yet. How many of you all have ever heard of the law of attraction? Some, okay, awesome. Well, that's what actually originally got me vegan. I didn't know about the animals. I didn't know, well, you know, I, I didn't put two and two together about the animals and, you know, how they end up on your plate. And I didn't know about the health aspect about it either. I didn't know that you could be healthy and not eat meat. That was beyond me. And I didn't understand the environmental impact that factory farming and that just, you know, eating meat, dairy, and eggs all have on our, uh, you know, environment as a whole. But what originally got me started on the vegan lifestyle was the law of attraction. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It talks about, um, you know, your thoughts become your reality. As above, so below. As within, so without. So, you know, you are what you eat, essentially. So if you're eating a lot of sickened, dead, tortured animal parts, then what do you think is going to come out? Some people have a, you know, a better balance than others because although they're eating a lot of meat, they're also still getting a lot of whole foods, a lot of uh, live enzymes, fruits, veggies, so it kind of ba sort of balances out. But the best way to balance this out is just to not put in that negative energy inside yourself. So if you're working on manifesting and creating just a better life for you and yourself being more abundant, that's what originally got me on the lifestyle. And that's what I attribute a lot, most of my success to. So, yeah. Now I'm happy to be doing it. Now I'm happy that I am getting healthier. I'm happy that I I'm saving a lot of animals' lives, not putting them on my plate, and just being an advocate for them and better for the environment. So that's a little bit about my vegan journey. How did you start off? I'm going to swap places with you because this court is kind of <laughs> short. Hi everyone. So um, I actually was not vegan when I met Roy, so he had a big deal to do with me becoming vegan. Um, when we first got into a relationship, I had no idea he was vegan. He didn't bring it up, so throw out that stereotype of how are you going to know a vegan's a vegan, they'll tell you in the first minute. No. 
he kept it a big secret. Um, so much of a secret that our very first date, I invited him out to Buffalo Wild Wings. And in retrospect, that was horrible, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> But uh, I used to work in Timeshare, so we stayed together for a week, and I knew that Royce would not eat any of the things that I was eating at the time. And I like to emphasize would not, not could not, because being vegan is a choice. It's a choice that we all decide to make if we go ahead and transition to that lifestyle. So I consider myself to be a very considerate person, and I had no problems just eating whatever he was eating for that one week that we stayed together. And what I found was that it was really, really simple um, and that it wasn't complicated and that it was something that I thought would actually be good for my body because I thought that I was being health conscious prior to being vegan. I thought I was eating the clean meats like white meat only and you know, staying away from certain kinds of seafood. Um, but I also didn't have a lot of information that I didn't realize was out there. Um, and I don't really think it's anybody's fault. Sometimes we have the tendency to think that we're being lied to and manipulated, but there's a, there's a big part of me that believes even those higher powers that be really, they still don't get it. Like I know it's all about money and uh, staying profitable and stuff like that, but part of me really thinks that it just hasn't connected for them yet. And that's like why it's all impor important for all of us to keep on spreading the vegan message and leading by a positive example so that some of the light bulb will go off one day and they'll just be like, oh, you know what? I didn't realize. <laughs> Let's let everybody else know now. That's pretty much what Royce and I are out to do. We have a company called Nor 17 and I'm not sure if any of, everyone looks like new faces to me, but have anyone here been to a Nor event before by show of hands? Okay, cool. So we're a vegan entertainment network and we're based out of Orlando and our entire mission is to spread awareness and shine a light on the vegan lifestyle in the most fun way possible. That's our entire goal and our entire mission. And one of the very big ways that we do that is that we have the International Vegan Fashion Show that happens at the end of the year. And this year it's gonna be on December the 14th and all of our models in the entire production are vegan. I'm not sure the ages on the models this year, but last year our youngest model was four years old and our oldest model was 62 years old. And that model wore a bikini for our fashion show. So I'm just saying we had a great big representation of all the different types of vegans that there are from all over the world. And we really just wanna make sure that everyone's represented. So we do different special events, mixers, parties, and as I mentioned, at the end of the year, that great big vegan fashion show. And a majority of the time, we're really just running around to all these different veg fests, jumping on the microphone and screaming at you guys and trying to wake you up <laughs> to make sure everybody's having a good time. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about Noor. If I miss something, you go ahead and add it in. Well. I was just going to talk about how Nor 17 kind of came to be because it's in my it's in my blood to always want to have fun, to always get people excited and things. That's I'm a game show host, okay? And my fiance, she's a runway model, so it just kind of makes sense to create a vegan entertainment network and to create that uh, vegan fashion show that we do. But we also do a whole bunch of other events too, like our annual vegan backyard barbecue and pool party. We host a big uh, vegan skate night, and all of these bring out, uh, you know, hundreds of people, whether they're vegan or uh, veg curious. You know, we appreciate everybody for coming out. For we appreciate everybody who's just wanting to learn a little bit more about the lifestyle because we were all there at one time. You know, I didn't have to. I actually, I was scared to tell Amari that I was vegan in the beginning because I didn't want her to, you know. I don't know. I felt that prior to her that I would say it just so fast and, you know, it's like, hey, I'm vegan. They're like, oh, yeah, this isn't going to work. Okay, no worries. But instead I was like, nope, nope, this time I'm just going to, you know, let, let my lifestyle show for itself. If she asks, then I'll tell her. I won't be afraid to, even though I was still afraid. But I told myself that I wouldn't be afraid. And then, she, you know, she got on the lifestyle 17 days later. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> Nor 17. Uh, Nor means light in Arabic. And we chose Arabic as 
the language that we wanted to name nor after because Arabic it's the language of the modern day Egyptians and if anyone's ever studied anything about the ancient Egyptians ancient Egypt Kemet they had a primarily vegan vegetarian lifestyle because they understood about as above so below as within so without they had a lot of uh, deep knowledge about like your pineal gland and just lucid dreams and having good lucid dreams such as that and things that the vegan lifestyle does bring for you so if you're vegan and you didn't know about that part about the vegan lifestyle uh, look into it because that's one of your that's one of your secret superpowers okay people are going to be looking at you like wow how are all these great things happening to you in your life it's because you're tapped in you're tu turned on you're tuned in it's good it's good but yeah other than that, I think that's about where we're at today. We're, you know, just getting ready for a fashion show. We're going to be moving out to L.A., making some big things happen from there. And uh, if anybody has any questions, we would love to give them an answer or do our best to. Any questions? Can you talk a little bit more about how you're using the law of attraction? You mentioned consuming the energy of the animal and how that affects our being Absolutely. So I've always felt more connected. And this was ever since I was really little. And it, I, start, I always enjoyed meditating. I always enjoyed uh, having lucid dreams and even, you know, astral projecting, just really feeling like, you know, you're having an out of body experience. And sometimes these things would be terrifying whenever they would actually happen. And I wanted to find a way to make them less scary. So whenever I just kind of opened up, like, how can I make this an enjoyable experience? Literally, you know, my life segued into, here's the vegan lifestyle and here's why. There's a gentleman on YouTube named Infinite Waters who talks about a lot of spirituality and talks about the law of attraction. He's been vegan now for 15 years. He, and he just kind of talks about how, you know, going vegan it makes this a much more positive experience for you and for me personally it's definitely been a lot more positive and, um you know and it is a journey it doesn't happen overnight because if you think about it if you look at it even from a scientific view it takes seven years for your body for every single cell to change and transform so if you are what you eat you know going vegan you know first night great your brain is there but you know, you, your body, your physical body has a lot of catching up to do. But as these things start to happen, you start to, you know, feel a lot more clearer. And that translates into your dreams and into your daydreams. Um, it, it, it is definitely a process, but it's a great process. Um, I hope that kind of helps. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, any, anything anybody wants to chime in on? So some of the mistakes that people go into a vegan lifestyle. Um, do you want to? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it's just funny because. So. Amari had mentioned whenever that whenever we first met that it was easy to go vegan. And it was because I was giving her all the tasty stuff. Gardein was BOGO at that time. So, oh yeah, yeah, Gardein was BOGO. I was like, oh, you, let, let me show you some of the things I eat. I was showing her a lot of the, you know, some of the more processed things I eat, but I wasn't showing her a lot of the whole foods, a lot of the actual, you know, fruits, veggies, nuts, seeds, beans, legumes that, you know, I consume. So that is the, I, I guess, one of the only pitfalls, what, the one that I like to address with people. I, I still say it beats eating, you know, flesh and animal products any day. Absolutely. Especially if you, if whether it's health-based or even if it's, you know, for your spirit, for law of attraction, then you're still going to be doing much better eating those foods than eating, you know, something that's not because... You know, a lot of different religions talk about how our body is a temple. 
okay? You know, it's not a graveyard, so we shouldn't be putting in dead bodies into there. You want to put things that are going to keep it alive, keep things that, not just your body alive, but your mind and your spirit alive too, and that's what it really breaks down to. There are there are so many levels to this law of attraction thing, but I, I appreciate having like literally the best partner ever to go through it because one of the fun things that I find as far as the more the healthier I start to eat and it starts to really clean out a lot of the, the junk that my body's been holding on to for many, many years, you start to feel some of these old attachments and old traumas that are just locked onto there. And they can be really scary to deal with, but you know, thanks for holding it down <laughs> whenever I lose it sometimes. Um, I, just to piggyback off of what he was saying and to answer your question, I think another mistake that people make is the conception that when you go vegan it has to be 100% overnight and you have to be perfect. And so then if someone falls short in a moment, like if they just really got to have that cheese because their brain is like, I got to have it, and they eat it that one time, then they're like, oh, I just can't be vegan because I got it wrong today. If you are on a journey to become vegan and you want to do it overnight, I think that's fantastic. I think that's great. But if you do make a mistake and there's a small little misstep, just wake up tomorrow and start over. Like, it's not a huge deal. The fact that you have the intention that you, you want to change your mind and you want to change your habits, that's absolutely good enough. And you will get where you're going as long as you keep that in mind and you remember your why. And there are lots of really great documentaries out right now. If you're somebody that is on the fence and wants to learn information, has anyone already watched The Game Changers? Show of hands, yeah? Great, that was a fantastic one. It actually was probably one of my favorites because it was so informative. It wasn't super gory and it was like pretty like straightforward, like A, B, C, D. Like you could easily explain all the things you learned on that documentary to someone else. So just keep in mind your why and everything will be fine. Does anybody else have any questions for us or anything they'd like to say? Congratulations. Aww. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anthony. <laughs> I did want to say one little thing about uh, just another pitfall that I find people running into is, and it kind of goes back to the law of attraction, about the law of attraction pretty much talks about you know, the music that you listen to, that kind of, uh, that programs your subconscious mind. But not just the music, also the news and information that you're taking in, the people that you're hanging around. Um, you know, just all these different things help, they, they help uh, program you into literally what you want to be. So if you are wanting to go on that vegan journey and in that lifestyle, I, one of the biggest advices that I could give you is go find you some good vegan friends, okay? Go to a veg fest like this one today or any other vegan meetup and meet some vegan people because unfortunately what can happen, what happened to me whenever I first decided that I wanted to go vegan, I was doing it for a whole week, six days. I was doing it for six days and then on the seventh day, my roommates brought in some McDonald's and they brought burgers for everybody and they said, here Royce, here's your burger. And I said, no, I don't eat that anymore, I'm vegan. And they said, what? Dude, my uncle went vegan and he died a month later. And I was like, give me that burger then, thank you, thank you. You know, I munched it, gobbled it up. Uh, dropped the whole vegan thing from there until a few months later whenever I moved in with a different group of roommates and I told them that same story they weren't vegan at the time but he said dude that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard you're not going to die because you're vegan in fact we should all literally be vegan if you're ever up to it you should go back to uh, you know being vegan and yeah like that day that that night like a flood of other information about being vegan came into my system where it's like the universe was saying hey time to go ahead and go back to that vegan lifestyle so yes go get you some vegan friends because if you if you're wanting to go down that lifestyle but you're not hanging you're you're not getting any other vegan influences it's just a lot of people telling you like oh well 
you know, you're going to be lacking in this and you're not going to be feeling good and you're going to be tired all the time, then that is what your subconscious mind is downloading and you're going to, you're going to be feeling like there's a lack. But I promise you, you start to find other vegan friends who are like, no, this is awesome, it's easy, here, eat this, try this, uh, you know, let's go here. You're, you're going to be at a much higher level, it's going to make this whole thing not just easier, but so enjoyable for you. And like our previous speaker was saying, Ms. Schiff, you know, um, you want to make sure that this is an enjoyable experience for you, or else you might not be doing it for too much longer, okay? We want to see you do it for a long time. We want to see, you know, just really the whole world go that direction. So, yeah. Is there any uh, other questions? Oh, yes. She was saying that she's a fitness uh, professional, and whenever some of her clients find out that she's vegan, they ask, whoa, whoa, you know, where do you get your protein? So she's asking, what is my answer? And I, so I used to get really offended whenever I'd first hear that, because it's always just seems to be that go-to. But now I enjoy that question because we all get a really good laugh at it. You know, I get my protein from the same sources that your protein gets it from but it's great because not only I, I don't have to get all the other stuff that your protein has you know your protein has a lot of fat a lot of trans fat a lot of cholesterol in there and I always like to break it down to the law of attraction that it has a lot of death it has a lot of sickness it has a lot of uh, you know the last memory is torture that your protein had to deal with mine uh, not so much actually not at all so, you know, I go straight to the source, straight to the source where the gorillas get theirs from, where elephants get theirs from, okay? And if they ever ask for more specifics, then we just go into different uh, beans and nuts and seeds. And even if you just break it down, it's like, how much protein do you actually need, okay? Um, we have one of our favorite people in the world, my soon-to-be uh, stepfather-in-law, who says, well, you know, I need a lot of protein. You, you don't need, you, you could use a lot of protein, but for one, you know, you're not, you're not working out like that. Um, and you're, he's always talking about losing more and more weight. So let's not eat the protein that you're wanting to, uh, you know, maintain this current weight. You're wanting to lose, you know, about a good 150 to 200 pounds, okay? So if we break it down, there's about enough protein for you per day in two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, a cup of almonds, and if you want to have one of the uh, Beyond Burgers, Beyond Meat or Sausage, like that would literally be all the protein that you actually need. Of course, we know you're going to eat way more, but that's just to kind of show him how easy it is to get the proper protein for his body. Um, but yeah, yeah, you know, we just go straight to the source. I go straight to the source, cut out the middleman. You got it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> and so Amari and I, we're pretty much like the same person we like to think at this point. She's, she's the pretty version, and I'm the loud version. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I can be loud, and you can be pretty. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, we're, we're, we balance each other out. For sure, for sure. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, anything anybody wants to? Yes, sir. The biggest, the biggest big call was um, you go out to eat or you go to your friends, or your relatives, or events. Um, you just have to really take care of yourself because you'll fall. You know, you'll kind of fall back, like you said. So when I invite you to a restaurant with friends, you just go on the menu. In almost 100% of the cases, there's something at the restaurant that I can eat. But I need to know that before I go to the event. Most of my family and friends 
they love that, right? even though they're not vegan, they love to be creative and make a vegan version of something for, for me, for my meal. Um, so but that was my biggest pitfall. It's like, I'm cooking three meals a day at home and I'm being creative and I love it. And my doctors, you know, he's like, what are you doing? Like, this is amazing, you know? But then you go to an event, and you go to a restaurant, you just want to go out with friends, you know? And so I find that being prepared, checking the menu, um, or if I go to like a potluck, oh, I'll make the salad, or I'll make like a potato salad, because I know how to make a vegan, you know? So that was my biggest problem. You know, and I 100% feel where you're coming from, because we have family and friends who will reach out to us for us to go somewhere, and sometimes if we don't know anything about the restaurant or, you know, we didn't do that quick little Google search, then, yeah, we just don't go. But then, we, you know, we're missing out on that family time or, you know, just really exposing them to the lifestyle. You know, so it's good to, you know, I know as vegans, sometimes we want to get away from the death and the torture and the sickness that's on the plate. But sometimes those people need our influence in their lives to be able to, you know, tell them like, hey, well, you know, this is what I eat. This is, you know, what I veganize. This, you know, I can eat at these places too. And a lot of them don't know that. So that's, you know, good for you as far as uh, being around with them. We got into Thai food. There are tons of Thai restaurants yep. in St. Petersburg and Ethiopian food. So that whole cultural, uh, Life opened up for me too. I'm like, wow, these are amazing foods. You don't have to worry so much about going to those restaurants. Oh, absolutely. And I met, uh, the reason I became vegan was because I met someone who was vegan. And I'm like, I'm just really practical. There's no way I'm making two meals. I'm going to like, <laughs> so I got to like decide what I'm going to do here. So I went vegan and that, it's that simple. That's why I became vegan. But it was the best thing for yeah. And I'm still with the person. So. Hey! <laughs> All right, well, folks, we appreciate you all for coming around, hearing Amari and I's story. We'll be here throughout the rest of the Veg Fest, so um, we're about to go ahead and introduce to you all the next speaker. Thank you all so much for listening to our story.